Hi, I'm Tamara Disco with your solar storm forecast for the week of February 11th. The Earth-facing Sun has been very interesting this week, starting with this huge filament er uh, that hasn't yet erupted, but it's snaking almost halfway across the solar disk. Now, part of it is rooted in this region 2280 that's actually quite magnetically complicated, and we've been expecting it to let off a big flare, but it hasn't. Actually, while we've been watching this, we get this huge M-class flare from region 2282, which isn't even as magnetically complex. And with that launched a huge solar storm, but I'll talk more about that in a minute. Switching to our M-flare threat meter, you can see the last M-class flare we had was a very short one that just barely popped over the M-flare threat level uh, back on February 4th. But since then, it's been reasonably quiet. We've kind of just hovered below the seafloor, waiting for something to happen until February 10th when we got that M2.4 flare from region 2282, and we're still kind of coming down off of that. Switching to our storm levels, you recall that uh, high-speed stream that we had back on February 2nd. That did pop us over the storm levels for a short while and gave us some nice aurora. But since then, we've been kind of down at the unsettled conditions, maybe popping up into active conditions just once or twice, but really not too much as of late, which has really kept all the aurora and disruptions pretty much at high latitude. But these unsettled conditions were wonderful enough to give us gorgeous aurora in high latitude places like Norway and Finland, also some gorgeous aurora in Yellowknife, Canada, and we've had some stunning aurora also uh, in the uh, southern regions, the Aurora Australis in New Zealand. Now getting back to that solar storm that was launched during that M-class flare, you can see all this dark here. Though that dimming region shows where that ejection was launched, and you can see the chronographs. It's an absolutely massive ejection that actually begins to kind of create like a halo around the sun, which means that despite the fact that it was launched pretty much eastward of us, it might actually be a tiny bit Earth-directed. Now switching to our prediction model Enlil, this is NOAA's version of the model. The top panel is density, the bottom panel is velocity, and when we look down on the north pole from the sun, you can see that a solar storm coming out, and it actually doesn't look like it's going to hit Earth, but then it just kind of causes this high-speed stream to just enhance just a little bit, and you can see it's going to peak right about the 15th of February. So anywhere between the 14th and the 15th, we might see some action. So what else does the sun have in store for us this week? Well, this is Stereo A. It's our backside monitor. You can see here's Earth, here's the sun, and here's Stereo A staring at the sun from behind. And what you can see is that there's a lot of activity on the east limb, but then there's this big gaping hole, and it's going to take about four or five days for that lack of activity to kind of rotate onto the disk and kind of give us some quiet before we start getting these other active regions. You see they're right in the middle of the backside of the disk right now. It's going to take a week for those to rotate back on. So we're going to see some quiet time for a little while. Returning to the disk, you can see region 2277 is rotating off of the west limb right now. and We only have three remaining active regions on the disk. Uh, region 2280, which is the most complex, region 2281, and 2282. So expect that the M-flare threat risk will be diminishing over the next few days uh, as we kind of go into a lull where we're not going to get any more active regions uh, on the east uh, limb for the next four days or so, um, as you could tell from the stereo images. Switching to our solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the next few days, we have been experiencing some unsettled solar wind, uh, basically because of a solar storm that passed to the east of us. And because of that, NOAA is expecting to have about a 25% chance of minor storm conditions over the next couple days at high latitudes, but pretty much just unsettled conditions uh, at uh, mid-latitudes. And then as we roll into the end of the week and the weekend, expect to ha start feeling effects from that uh, other solar storm that may just graze us and cause some enhanced wake effects. And that might uh, pump up the uh, storm condition possibilities for the 14th and the 15th to about 35 or 40, even 40 percent. And at mid-latitudes, you might even get a chance for some aurora if, uh, if we see the wake effect be strong enough. Switching to our solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the next few days, we do only have three active regions that are flare producers on the Earth-facing disk right now. So NOAA has lowered our M-class threat risk to about 30% over the next few days, and it will likely drop further uh, once region 2280 disappears on the west limb. That's the most magnetically complex region, despite the fact that region 2282 is the one that fired that M-class flare. But we will be monitoring that for in increased in complexity over the next few days and obviously will up the flare risk uh, if it's warranted.
So we've seen some surprises this week. We've been expecting this huge solar filament that's snaking across the sun's disk right now to lift off and erupt, and it manages to hang on. And that thing right now is still in the Earth strike zone and probably will be that way for the next few days. So if it does lift off within the next few days, it will cause an Earth-directed solar storm, so we're monitoring it carefully. Plus, out of the blue, we have Region 2282 firing off not just an M-class flare, but launching this monstrous solar storm that actually has a chance, even though it's going east of us, it has a chance to actually graze Earth. So you are uh, amateur radio operators and aurora photographers, keep your eyes out around the 14th to the 15th, because you might get a chance to get some uh, heightened activity during that period of time. Outside of that, we're expecting the space weather to be reasonably quiet this week. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.